Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up show, Best Game Cox podcast on the internet. Today is Wednesday, April the 21st, 2021. Today's show, the stage is set. The Game Cox set to do battle with number one Arkansas this weekend at Founders Park in a best of three series. Guys, I'll break it all down in its entirety. First things first, we'll start with the Razorbacks, break down their season at this point. We'll talk their pitching, their hitting. Also, of course, we jump into the South Ghana side of things, the weekend rotation, what to watch for. Key player for this weekend is, again, the Gamecocks host Arkansas in one of the most highly anticipated series in recent memory for Gamecocks baseball. Also, guys, news and notes to get into. we got a packed show here on a Wednesday, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention their companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company. They're a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. The movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing service services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They're founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media, at Upstate Movers Group, or of course, if you have any other questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the series we have all been waiting for is finally here. The Gamecocks hosting the number one team in the land, the Arkansas Razorbacks coming to town. I'm fired up. Hope you're doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, shows the Spurs Up show as always. Guys, appreciate you tuning in. Happy hump day. Hope your Wednesday, first off, is going well. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, if you're in the office, the commute, you're in class, you got the day off, whatever it is. I hope this finds you well. You know, it's kind of nice. These Thursday through Saturday series are sort of weird. Um, You know, it definitely threw me for a loop last week, but it's kind of nice because it makes you feel like the week is shortened, right? Like, hey, it's Wednesday, but we got Gamecock baseball tomorrow. You know, it's, it's, it's not your typical Wednesday, if you will. Tomorrow's not your typical Thursday. It feels good. It brings some excitement to Friday Junior, a.k.a. Thursday. So, again, I hope this show finds you well, guys. Hope you're all doing well. One quick note, if you guys did not know, didn't hear, we got everything finalized with our Rivals deal, getting our merchandise back in Rivals in Florence, South Carolina. So I want to first say, guys, how grateful I am to you you all. Thank you so much. Without your love and support, especially, especially you guys supporting the merch, none of this would be possible. So, again, we're re-upping on the Beamer Ball merch. We've got Rowdy Rooster merch. We've got Gamecocks baseball merch. We've got Clem Sucks merch going in there. So that should be within the next two, two and a half weeks or so. But that merchandise getting back into Rivals in Florence, South Carolina, guys, please be sure to go in there, check them out, get yourself some merchandise. If you're in the local area, if you want to make the trip, whatever it may be. And hey, if you go buy merch, put up a picture on social media, tag us. I'd love to repost it. I'd love to share it. I'd love to reach out to you directly and say thank you. So again, That merch is going to be there, and I'm really excited to announce that and share that with you guys because, like I said, without your love and support, none of it will be possible. None of it will be possible. We would not be able to do stuff like that. And the merchandise stuff, honestly, is one of my favorite sides of the business. I love the creativity behind that, making cool merchandise for Gamecock fans and things that maybe you couldn't necessarily find, you know, in the bookstore or whatever, you know, just some some off-the-wall type of gear, if you will. So, again, guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your love and support because without you guys, something like that, most certainly would not 
be possible. So on that positive note, guys, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Like I said in the beginning, the series we've all been waiting for, one of the most highly anticipated weekends in Columbia, South Carolina for Gamecocks baseball in recent memory gets going tomorrow night as number one Arkansas comes to town guys for a best of three game set at Founders Park it all gets going tomorrow night seven o'clock on the SEC network the big channel so hey if you can't be there we all know the increased capacity but if you still can't make it if you can't get a ticket tomorrow night seven o'clock first pitch on SEC network the big channel is going to have this game so you can watch it there Friday they get going at seven o'clock on SEC network plus and then Saturday of course a lot going on on Saturday with the spring game at two o'clock but if you're in Columbia if you're at the spring game Get over to Founders Park for first pitch at 4 o'clock on SEC Network+. Plus, Of course, Arkansas, the SEC West, their head coach, Dave Van Horn, which one of the most respected head coaches in all of college baseball, what he's done with that Arkansas program in Fayetteville, building that program, obviously one of the powers in college baseball right now. Their 2021 season, um, yeah, let's just say it's gone pretty well. They're 30-6 and six overall, 11-4 and four in the SEC, the number one team in the SEC right now. And that's kind of an interesting storyline as well. South Carolina, at 10-5 and five in the league, sits just one game behind the Arkansas Razorbacks for the best record in the SEC right now. So, again, a clash of the Titans, if you will, number one versus number 11, which, hey, we can debate it should be a top-10 matchup. I still say it basically is a top-10 matchup. I don't give a damn what D1Baseball.com says, and I love the guys that do the work over there, but it's basically a top-10 matchup this weekend at Founders Park. Guys, let's dive into the Razorbacks just a little bit more. Let's talk about their pitching first. Let's talk their pitching because this is where it's kind of interesting for Arkansas because you think to yourself, man, they're 30 and six, 11 and four in the league. Their pitching must be dominant, right? Like you'd think their pitching is unreal. Not necessarily the case. They have a 4.19 team ERA. Hitting is the strength of this team. There's no question. And I was taking a look at SEC stats a little bit earlier and just kind of where teams ranked. I was really curious because, you know, at the halfway point, I think this is where we can sort of look. And, you know, judge teams. We can start to judge teams statistically. You know, early in the year, you don't really, you can't really get a feel for it. You've only played a couple of series. Well, at the halfway point, as we sit right now, Arkansas ranks 11th in the league in team ERA at 4.19. South Carolina, on the contrary, at 3.33. Hey, the only team ahead of the Gamecocks, because South Carolina's second, the only team ahead of the Gamecocks, Vanderbilt, with a ridiculous 2.87. And, of course, when you have Kumar Rocker and you have Jack Leiter, I mean, what do you expect? But, again, Arkansas 11th in the league at a 4.19 clip, which, again, is just really surprising because when you think of a team that's 30-6 and six and 11-4 and four in conference play, they're not exactly unhittable on the bump. You know, we've seen them get scored on. You know, we've seen them have to win some slugfest. I, I was looking back at their schedule and, you know, I think it was a game against Ole Miss. They had to win like 18 to 14. They just lost this past Sunday to Texas A&M 11 to 10. And Sunday has been the weakness for them. That's, that's been where they've been hit a lot this season. Let's take a look at that starting rotation for Arkansas. They throw a good one tomorrow night. Boy, left in a pitcher, Patrick Wicklander, one and one with a 2.38 ERA. Absolutely filthy from the left side. And here's something interesting about Arkansas. They feature two southpaws. In the weekend rotation, similar to what Georgia threw at you. Friday, they're going to throw right-handed pitcher Peyton Pallet, one and two with a 4.06 ERA. And then Saturday, Arkansas will go with left-handed pitcher Lael Lockhart, one and one with a 4.38 ERA. So again, you hear those ERAs on Friday and Saturday. I mean, it's not what you'd expect from a ball club as good as Arkansas, at least when you look on paper. But hear me out. The Razorbacks, they make up for it with the bats. Let's move into the Arkansas hitters. These numbers jump off the freaking page at you, man. These numbers jump off the page. Arkansas ranks fourth in the conference in average. Okay. They're hitting 287 as a team. They lead the SEC in home runs. And guys, it's it's really not particularly close. Arkansas has 70 home runs this point. The next highest. LSU with 54. The Gamecocks are right behind, by the way, 52. But Arkansas was 70 bombs on the season. This team hits bombs all over the place. 412 on base percentage. Hey, they run too. They're athletic. 35 for 40 stolen bases. And they are slugging 519 on the season. Again, Arkansas leads the conference in total bases, 
They lead the conference in by, – and by the way, they get on base. They lead the conference in walks. They lead the conference in hit-by-pitches. And they don't strike out a crazy – I mean, they're the third in the conference in strikeouts. They don't strike out a, a crazy amount, though. Also lead the conference in sack flies, which in case you were just wondering, in case you were interested in that. But bottom line, this is a team that, yes, they're solid on the bump. I think to call Arkansas bad on, on the mound would be a mistake. But this team makes a living hitting the long ball. This team makes a living scoring a lot of runs. Again, a 287 average and leading the conference with 70 bombs. That's all you need to know about Arkansas. In 2021, players to watch for for the Razorbacks. And again, there are so many good ones. There are so many guys that can absolutely slug it on this Arkansas roster. I got to start, though, with a guy that I'm really high on. That's outfielder Christian Franklin. Franklin, truly a five tool guy, hitting 292 this year, nine homers, 34 RBIs. He's eight for 10 in stolen bases as well. All the upside in the world. This guy, guys, is going to be a big time ball player at the next level. Another player to watch for, designated hitter, Matt. Good heart. And this dude, he's just living up to preseason expectations. First team, preseason All-SEC DH. Ho-hum, he's just hitting 343 with 11 homers and 27 RBIs. His bad. And then finally, infielder Brady Slavens. Get this guy. 2020 Juco Player of the Year. In junior college, before the season was cut off, in 22 games, he hit 507 with 14 homers and 47 RBIs in 22 games. And his stats this year ain't too shabby either. Hitting 324 for Arkansas, 10 home runs, and 45 RBIs in 30 games. 36 games, excuse me. But the point stands, it's this. While Arkansas is decent on the mound, hitting is the calling card for this Razorback squad in 2021. Guys, let's move to the South Carolina side of things. Of course, the weekend rotation looks the same. Ryan, a pitcher, Thomas Farr will get the ball tomorrow night. Ryan, a pitcher, Brandon Jordan on Friday. And then Ryan, a pitcher, Will Sanders on Saturday in the final game. Let's move into what to watch for. And the first thing is this. I already set the stage for you guys earlier. This is the biggest series at Founders Park since when? I mean, honestly. Hey, this is the biggest series for Gamecocks baseball since when? You know? Really? 2017, maybe 2016, when you played the Gators, you think back to the early 2010s and 2011, and and those matchups with Florida and Vandy, and that's a big one, guys. That's a big one, and I think this is huge for a couple of different reasons. But the one that jumps out to me is this: is like this is the opportunity. You know, South Carolina this season has has done a really good job. You know, ten and five in the SEC ranked in the top 15, ranked 11th overall, top 10 in some polls. And you've done a really good job kind of putting your foot in the door of the national college baseball landscape and saying, you know, here we are. We're a legitimate threat. We're not a pretender. We're a contender. Okay? So you've cracked the door a bit. This weekend is your chance to kick it in. I mean, this is a huge opportunity to say, hey, Carolina baseball, we're back. We're legitimately back. We, we are a legitimate contender to deal with this season, not just in the SEC, but on a national level. You know, I I know a lot of fans right now, you know, look at the D1Baseball.com poll, and and they feel feel we're quote-unquote disrespected, and we're not getting the love nationally. Hey, you want the love? You want the respect? Go take two out of three from Arkansas. Yeah, go take two out of three from the Razorbacks. That'll wake everybody up. I promise you. And... I can't wait for this weekend. I secured all my tickets to all three of the games. The electricity, the energy, the buzz, the excitement. I mean, again, I've been giddy all week, man. I've been fired up all week long. So ready to go. On the edge of my seat, just chomping at the bit. So ready for tomorrow. It's a huge series, man. Not just for this weekend, not just for the SEC East race, not just for the SEC race, but the national perception of Gamecock baseball, which I think South Carolina baseball is still nationally respected, if you will. But there's a lot of people that have wondered, you know, hey, when's Carolina baseball going to get back? 
And maybe those expectations are a little bit unfair. Maybe they're a little bit too lofty. I don't know. But this weekend, this weekend against Arkansas, it provides you that opportunity to kick that freaking door in and tell the college baseball world, hey, South Carolina baseball, we're back. We're back and we're better than ever. We're a legitimate contender in this 2021 season, not just in the SEC, but nationally. So a huge series at Founders. you got a great opportunity. Something else to watch for that has nothing to do with either of these teams, and that is the weather for Saturday. You know, South Carolina series was already impacted last weekend. The first Thursday through Saturday series impacted by weather last weekend when you couldn't play Friday night and they had to bump it into a doubleheader on Saturday. Well, I don't know if you guys have looked, but the forecast for Saturday is not great. 100% chance of rain basically right now. I think maybe 95%, something like that. Does South Carolina make any adjustments? And hey, maybe by the time you guys are hearing this, they might have already done that. You know, God forbid do you play a doubleheader on Friday, which I would hate. I would hate that. But does that type of adjustment have to be made? Um, you know, Gamecock Baseball said last week that I, I guess it's an SEC rule. You have three days to play three games. So if South gonna play Thursday, Friday, and then tried to play Saturday and couldn't get it in, they would just have to make it up till later in the season. There's no, there's no pushing it back to Sunday, which I think is ridiculous. I agree with you guys. But apparently that is the rule. So how does the weather affect this series? And I, I know some of you asked, Chris, if we had to play a doubleheader on Friday, would that be a positive or a negative? And I don't really know that'd be a positive or a negative. I, I don't know that would really help South Carolina. You know, I think it did help the Gamecocks last weekend. I think getting that Friday night game pushed back to Saturday, I thought that was extremely beneficial because you avoided an LSU team at home at night with all the momentum, right? And you had two seven-inning games when you had all your arms ready to go. So what does the weather do on Saturday? You know, hopefully weathermen are wrong all the time. Hopefully they're wrong yet again, and hopefully you can get that game in on Saturday. But the weather's certainly something to keep an eye on for, and I just wonder – I just wonder, will USC, will they move the time of the game? Will they try to play two on Friday? I mean, who knows? Who knows? But definitely something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, something else I'm watching for, guys. Again, this is going to be a storyline until it gets fixed. But does South Carolina finally solve its game one woes? Do they finally figure that out? Because I'll tell you guys right now, you know, I'm not giving my prediction until tomorrow. And I think this team's done a great job, you know, after losing game one to battle and be resilient. Hell, they've done it three weekends in a row. You know, losing game one, that win any way mentality, finding a way to just still win the series despite the adversity. But I'm going to tell you right now, like I said, I'm giving my prediction tomorrow. If South Carolina doesn't win game one, I don't think they win this series. Bottom line. I, you just cannot keep playing with fire. You, you can't do it. You're going to get burned at some point. And a team like Arkansas, you know, I thought it was going to be LSU. I thought if you lost game one to LSU, I thought they'd make you pay. Like I said, I think you got a real break getting that Friday game pushed back and playing that doubleheader on Saturday. But a team like Arkansas, the number one team in the country, they're going to make you pay. I, I just don't see a scenario in which if you lose game one, you win games two and three. Now, I'm not saying if they lose game one, just pack it in, mail it in, whatever. I'm not saying that. We've seen crazier things than if they were to win Friday and Saturday and take the series anyways. Hey, win anyway, right? Despite what I say, despite what anybody says. But the game one woes, you know, everybody wants to point at something different. Oh, it's Thomas Farr. Oh, it's the hitting. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Guys, it's everything. You know, it, I think to put the blame on one party specifically is the wrong approach. Like, we got to be better in all facets. We got to be better on the bump. Thomas Farr has got to be better. The hitters have got to be better. The approaches have to be better. Hey, the coaching's got to be better. The fielding has to be Everything has to be more crisp. Everything has to be sharper. And when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Because think about it. Game one, who are you facing? Bro, you are facing the best of the best. I mean, you're facing the best of the best no matter what. But in game one, you're facing a game one starter in the SEC. You have to be that much more sharp. You have to be that much more crisp because you are facing 
the best competition you will see in college baseball on a Friday night or a game one in the SEC. But can South Carolina, and, you know, don't listen to these people, by the way, these people that try to say, oh, we just, you know, we don't come out fired up. We don't come out ready to play. You know, we don't really want to win game one. We're not really trying to win. You know, we'll show up on games two and three. That is the most bogus, bullshit, idiotic statement I have ever heard. And I've seen people saying that. That's, that's why I'm saying that. If you're one of those people, literally go get your head checked. If you think this team is showing up in game one, isn't excited to play, you think they don't want to win, they're not trying to win, I mean, literally go see a doctor. You're, you're insane. You're crazy. Has nothing to do with that. You just have not played good enough baseball to win. Most of the time, I think you haven't swung it well enough to win. But it's been a mix of things. It's been a combo. Everyone has to be better. Speaking of game one woes, of course, this will continue to be a storyline until it gets fixed. But something else to watch for, how important is this outing for Thomas Farr tomorrow? How important, you know? Now, if he goes out yet again and gives up five innings pitch, two earned runs, I don't see him getting moved. I don't see him getting moved in the weekend rotation. I just don't see it. I've told you guys already, I think you create more problems than you solve when you do something like that. But, of course, the chatter has started from Gamecock Nation. The chatter has started from the South Carolina fan base. And if Thomas Farr goes back out there tomorrow night and gets hit around and has a 25-pitch first inning and can't locate and has five or six walks, can't get out of the fifth inning, that chatter is only going to get louder and louder and louder and louder. And, hey, what can you expect? It's the passion of Gamecock fans. Can't blame them for it. But just how important is this outing for Thomas Farr? You know, nobody needs a better outing this weekend, and nobody needs a better weekend this weekend more than Thomas Farr does. <laughs> nobody needs a good performance more than he does. And like I said, hey, the game one woes, some of it does fall on Thomas Farr in my mind. He's got to be better. He's your ace. He's your horse. He's got to be better. I talked about last week, him setting the tone. He's got to set the tone for you tomorrow night. He has to. I don't care. I don't give a damn how good of a hitting team Arkansas is. You're our number one. You're our ace. You're our horse. Go out there and shove it up their ass. The rest of the team's got to help him, 110%, no doubt. Because Arkansas guys, they're going to hit this week. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to hit. You are not going to hold them down for all three games. Team is way too good. But this outing for Thomas Farr, not just for his confidence, for the team's confidence, for this fan base's confidence in him, I think this outing is massive. Because what you don't want to see happen, you know, he's had a couple of bad outings, whatever, no biggie. But if you continue to see it happening, it goes from being a one-off to being the norm, to being a trend. And then you do start having some very tough conversations. You do start asking yourself some very tough questions. So, again, you know, I know, and here's the thing. I say it's big for far. Fans say it's big. What do you guys think he's thinking? He knows. He knows he hasn't pitched as well as he should. And I hope with that being said, we see a guy come out not pressing, not putting the pressure on himself. Hey, your shit is good enough. Go out there and just let it eat. Go out there and let it eat, man. Your stuff's good enough. You're a first-rounder. You don't need to try any harder. You don't need to do anything outside of what you do. Just go be Thomas Farr. Go be that dude we know that you are. There's a reason he's in that game one slot, guys. Bottom line. But I think, again, extremely important outing. Not just for his confidence, but, again, the coach's confidence. Snapping these game one woes. Because, like I said, at some point, you got to win a game one. You can't keep losing game one. And then this fan base as well, who has been all over Thomas Farr the last couple of weeks. I talked about the Arkansas hitters, and something else I'm watching for, guys, is simply this. Can the Carolina Bats keep up with Arkansas this weekend? Because there's no question. They've had much, much more success at the plate than you have. And I'm not sitting here saying that oh, I expect South Carolina pitchers to get hit around all week and whatever, but this is the stiffest test of the season for them. Again, Arkansas leading the SEC in bombs with 70. I bet they're leading the country. Hitting 287 as a team, 
This team can swing it. And as good as your pitchers are, and I expect Gamecock pitchers yet again to keep us in every single ball game, you are going to have to score. You're just going to have to. Certainly, I think it's a huge advantage for the Gamecocks to be at home at Founders Park, the friendly confines. We love to hit there. That certainly helps your case. But, you know, I think you're going to have to score more than probably three or four runs to win these ball games. And I could be wrong. Could be totally wrong. I don't want to doubt our pitchers. But Arkansas can swing it. You know, that's been the inconsistency of this team. We all know is the bats. Hitting with runners in scoring position. You know, converting when you have opportunities. You got to find a way to convert those chances. You, you just have to. When you're facing a team like Arkansas who can strike at any moment, that's amplified against the likes of them. And hey, like I said before, it's not like they're world beaters in the mountain. You're not facing Vanderbilt. They got a 4.19 team ERA. They're, they're hittable. 4.19 ERA. They're hittable. But Arkansas is going to score, guys. They're going to score. The question is, can you keep up with them? You're going to need one of your best weekends from your lineup, in my opinion. And just how much can you get out of them? Speaking of the Gamecocks lineup, something else I'm watching for, Wes Clark. Man, he's the talk of the town, isn't he? Everybody wants to talk about Wes Clark. And his cold streak, and he can't do this, and he can't do that, and he can't hit this, and he can't hit that. Is this the weekend Wes Clark snaps out of it, gets back to being Wes Clark? Because, hey, right now hitting 200 in SEC play, I get the gripes. I, I, I get it. Guy hadn't hit a home run in damn near three weeks. It's crazy it's been that long. You maybe think returning home could be just what the doctor ordered for Wes. But, again, like I said, you're, you're not facing some overpowering pitching staff, if you will. Very hittable. Basically, everybody's hit them. I mean, at, to some degree. You know, certainly they've got some really talented arms. But you just think to yourself, if South Carolina is going to beat Arkansas, a team that is as good as any, probably the best in the country at hitting the long ball, your power bats have got to be up to the challenge. And a guy like Wes Clark, I, I just don't see a scenario in which he can go one for the weekend and you win this series. You're going to need him. You're going to need him to step up. So, does Wes Clark finally snap out of that streak? Do we see a big weekend? Do we see Wes Clark return to form this weekend against the best competition in all of college baseball? Something else I'm watching for, back to the mound, guys. You know, I talked about the Gamecocks pitchers and how good they've been this year, by the way. They've been incredible, giving you a chance to win each and every single weekend. And I've told you guys before, hey, as good as we are on the mound and as good as we are at the plate, there's going to come a weekend where, hey, your, your hitters have got to pick up your pitchers. And there's also weekends, we've seen many of them, where your pitchers have got to pick up your hitters. Everybody's got to pick each other up. If I had to guess, and again, that's not to doubt our guys, this is the most likely weekend where it's like, okay, our hitting is going to have to pick us up a little bit. Because this is the greatest challenge yet for these South kind of arms, especially the youngsters, especially the young guys. And our young guys are damn good. Don't get me wrong. And we have all hands on deck with no midweek game. I mean, Jack Mahoney's fresh, ready to go. Everybody out of that pen is ready to go. No issue there. But just how does a, a, a very – I mean, something's got to give, right? The Gamecocks are second in the SEC in ERA at a 3.33 clip. Arkansas? Number one in the conference in homers. I mean, something has to give, right? And that, I tell you what, that's, that's one of the matchups I cannot wait to watch all weekend long. It's just the talented South kind of arms, especially with the strikeout stuff they have, going up against this Arkansas lineup. I, I cannot wait to watch that battle all weekend. Going to be so much fun. But especially those young arms, you know? You know, you need Thomas Farr to set the tone on Thursday. I think Brandon Jordan is going to do his thing. How does Will Sanders fare? It's a big game for him. You know, all those guys out of the bullpen, Julian Bosnick. You know, Jack Mahoney. 
Fipsy, Danny Lloyd, Andy Peters. Got a lot of talented arms in that Gamecocks pitching staff. But this is by far their greatest challenge. And again, I cannot wait to watch the matchup because it's good on good. I mean, no doubt. This is great on great. An unstoppable force against an immovable object. Who has the upper hand when the dust settles on Saturday afternoon? So something else I'm looking for, guys, especially in a series like this, what it's going to come down to. You know, we saw it a little bit last week against LSU. But when you're trying to take down the number one team in the country, you have to ask yourself, and when we look back, I think when this series is over and we talk on Monday and we look back after the last game ends on Saturday, which team does the little things better? That's going to be the team that wins this series because you got two really, really good teams, two really good ball clubs. Which one handles the moment better? Which ones avoid making the big mistakes? You know, who hits with runners in scoring position? Who hits with two outs? Who doesn't? Who gets that big strikeout? Who, who, who makes a clutch pitch? Who gets the bunt down? Who executes the hit and run? Who misses a sign or who doesn't miss a sign? Who walks guys? Who hits guys? Stuff like that. That's what it's going to come down to. The little things. In a series like this, like I said, where both teams are so high level, they're so good, those little things will make the big difference. Which team executes better? That'll be the one that wins this series. Again, I challenge you guys to keep an eye on that. South Carolina tries to get a bunt down. They get it down. Boom, you execute. Stuff like that's going to add up. Stuff like that will add up this weekend. So I'm really excited to see. Can South Carolina be that team that executes on the little things better? Finally, guys, what I'm, what, what I'm most excited to see and what I'm looking for, the Rowdy Roosters filling up the ballpark. Man, it feels so good to know there's going to be almost, what, 3,500 in the stadium? And I'll be one of them, which I can't wait. But that home field advantage, that home field atmosphere, the Founders Park hecklers, the rowdy roosters doing their worst. Arkansas is walking into a freaking zoo. The hen house, the cockpit, whatever you want to call it. I cannot wait to take in and experience that atmosphere. You know, because I, I got to be honest, I think Gamecock fans have actually done a fairly decent job making it a home field advantage with the limited numbers we have. Now you increase that? Oh, I can't wait. Absolutely cannot wait to see what Gamecock Nation has in store for, like I said, one of the most highly anticipated weekends in recent memory for Carolina baseball. So, all right, let's get into key player for the weekend. Key player for this weekend against Arkansas. And guys, I talked about him earlier, and I'm going to mention him again. And I just think when you look at this series, and I'll have my full prediction and breakdown tomorrow even further. When you look at this series, though, your pitchers are going to give you a chance to win each and every single ball game. With that being said, Arkansas is going to get theirs. They're going to get, they're going to get their hits. They're going to get their runs. It just is what it is. They're a really, really good ball club. I know great pitching beats great hitting. I agree 110%. But I think Arkansas... They're going to score. You're not going to hold them down for three games. And again, one of the best power hitting teams, if not the best power hitting teams in college baseball. You got to find a way to go blow for blow with them this weekend. And I just think the guy that's going to lead that charge for you, that power charge, it's got to be Wes Clark. It's got to be Wes Clark. When it comes to a series like this, and you're talking about, playing the absolute best competition, and you're trying to take down the best, great players have got to step up. Your best players have got to play their best baseball. And a guy like Wes Clark has got to have his best weekend. I know he's been in a slump. I know he's been struggling, and I fully believe in Wes that he can turn it around and continue to be that guy. You know, even in his slump, He's continued to be a good teammate. He's continued to get on base. He's leading this team in on-base percentage in SEC play, believe it or not. So he continues to put together productive at-bats. 
But somebody asked me the other day, you know, oh, is, is Arkansas going to pitch around West Clark? Why would they? No, I think he's going to get a chance to hit. I think he will get a chance to swing it. And returning home, again, against a gettable Arkansas staff. I'm not saying that, like, disrespectfully, but not the most dominant staff you've seen this year. I just think that we're going to see the ball flying all over Founders Park. I, I, I do. I, I think that Arkansas is going to get theirs. You're going to have to get yours. And I feel like it's going to start with a guy like Wes Clark. I, I think he needs to break out. He needs to have that big weekend. There's going to come a moment, probably more than once, but there's going to come moments in this series this weekend where Wes Clark is up in a big spot, in a big situation, and a big swing and a big knock from him could completely change the momentum, can completely change South Carolina's fate in this series. So, again, my key player for this weekend, designated hitter Wes Clark. I think it's about time he snaps out of his slump. You're going to need him to do so. Arkansas is going to bring their power. you got to bring your power as well. you got to be able to punch back when they punch you. So, again, my key player for this weekend, designated hitter, West Clark. Guys, that's going to do it all for my breakdown of the series against the Arkansas Razorbacks, the number one ranked Arkansas Razorbacks, guys. And I'll have my full prediction for the weekend on tomorrow's show as the series gets going at Founders Park. I'm fired up, man. I'm excited. I can't wait. Cannot wait for this series this weekend. All right. News and notes to get into, and then we'll wrap this thing up. First thing, Shane Beamer, speaking to the media ahead of the spring game yesterday, I'll tell you guys, the thing that stood out to me the most, and I felt like he spent the most time talking about, was the depth or lack thereof of this team. And basically saying that, you know, with the injuries and guys banged up, I mean, heck, they've hardly even got enough guys to split up and have a spring game. So I think fans, when we talk about going into the 2021 season, and, and certainly it's something I'll mention, but I think fans do need to keep in mind, do we have talent on this roster? Yes, we do, but depth is a real problem. It's a real problem, and the only way you solve that is in recruiting. That's the only way you can do it. So I know we're all excited for the spring game. I know I am, but that was really the thing that jumped out to me when Shane Beamer spoke to the media was just simply, you know, God, are we really that thin? Is depth really that big of an issue for us? And it sounds like, unfortunately, that it is. So we'll see what that looks like on Saturday. And again, hopefully the weather holds off. He was asked about that and stuff like that. But really, again, that was my main takeaway was just, wow, the depth. I mean, Beamer has talked about depth all preseason. All preseason long. So, again, we'll see what it looks like on Saturday. Final thing, guys, we'll wrap it up. South Carolina set to play Coastal Carolina in football in 2000. 25 Again, this was a game that was scheduled for last year that got canceled due to COVID, of course, but they're going to set to play. How about this? South Carolina's paying Coastal $1.4 million to come play them in 2025. What a sweet gig that is. $1.4 mil for the shots to make the road trip down from Myrtle Beach. Unreal. But hopefully 2025 Gamecocks football, the, 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 uh, prospects of it looks a little bit different than it does, than it does right now. I know, I know many people are like, God, well, we want to play Coastal. But I think at that point, hopefully that matchup looks a little bit different than it does in current day. But again, guys, that's going to do it all for me. Again, Arkansas series preview in the books. Full prediction tomorrow, guys. The series gets going tomorrow. It's an exciting week. What a time to be a Gamecock, guys. Again, thank you so much, like I said in the beginning, for all the love and support. I I'm so grateful, so thankful for all of you for supporting and sharing the content, showing love to the content, especially showing love to the merchandise. This is a legitimate business, and we could not operate this business and run this business without you. So, again, thank you guys so much for the love. Appreciate you all tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow.